Hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a mom to four. I love to homeschool. I love to read good books, and that is what I share most on this channel. So welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Today's video is a fun one. I want to share a little bit of my process for how I'm setting up my current unit study, which we are doing the human body. Now, again, I have a six and a half year old first grader and a five year old kindergartner. So that is the level I'm gearing this towards. Like I've been saying in my past couple videos, I'm going to try something different for science. Granted, I just started a month and a half ago, but things aren't exactly what I want. And I'll refer you to my one month update video about homeschooling to just give you a few more details about how I decided to make this transition in science because we started the year out with elemental science, specifically biology for the grammar stage. And there's many parts of it that I really liked. There's many parts that just didn't work and they didn't jive with my kids. And so I'm adjusting things. So I'm also gonna link my plant unit study because that one, we really used the curriculum and followed that. And it was more of a video that showed what we did. So I have some clips in there about how we did things. This video is not that. We're in the process of doing this unit study. This is more to show you how I went about planning this unit study because basically, this is me going a little bit off script. So I am not following a curriculum. I'm still using elemental science a bit as a guideline. So kind of coming up with some bigger, broader topics, sticking with one of those spines as well as the experiment demonstration book. So I'm keeping some stuff from elemental science, but I'm designing it myself. I hope that all makes sense. So I'm just gonna flip you around, show you what I have, how I did this. I'm also gonna show you my resources, some of the activities. I'm planning on linking them below to make them easy for you to find. Some of them will be affiliate links and that just helps me out. So I do appreciate that. So let me just flip the camera around and I will share my plans with you. So the first thing I do is figure out the number of days I need for this unit study. And I set myself up in days instead of weeks for a couple reasons. And I plan on starting on Tuesday and then what I have marked out for myself is a couple different things. I've circled all the days that my kids have their enrichment school, so they're dropped off, so we're not gonna be doing the unit study those days. I have a couple days here underlined. Those are days that we're not taking them off, but those are our nature days or museum days. And so I have those marked, so we're also not doing a unit study there. I have kind of a five-day weekend here in October, and then it ends on the 27th. So what I did, is I just look through all those things, including the two days off here, holidays, and then I just counted it all up and I ended up with 34 days. So after I counted the number of days that I had, I decided I wanted to do about 10 topics and there are gonna be about three days each. So that gets me about 30 days. And I think that's really important when you're planning a unit study for yourself is to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room in your schedule. So what I did next was I wanted to pick out my spine books. So here are the two books that we are going to be using as a spine for this unit. The DK First Human Body Encyclopedia book, as well as 100 Questions About the Human Body book. And again, I will link all these down below. So this book right here, the DK book, actually was a part of the elemental science program. So this was nice to start out with, but what I was finding is that my kids are kind of young, and so I wanted something that was a little bit more fun. The elemental science program just isn't very much fun is what I have found with like the plant stuff is that they weren't paying a ton of attention. So I decided to try this where it's a book that's full of a lot of questions. And since kids have just a million questions anyway, this I thought was maybe a better approach to start with a question like what are cells made of? And we could talk through that and then we can look into this book as well and find this spread on cells and we can learn a little bit more about it but it starts with a question, if that makes sense. So I set myself up 10 categories. So these are the 10 big topics. And then I went through both of these books and I wrote out the questions first. So it's like here in basic building blocks, for instance, I wrote out the question, what is our body made of? Cause that was on page four in here. So for instance, it's like here, what is our body made of? So we can read that, we can look at this picture. And what I also did then was I looked and found on DK four to five, it also talks about that same idea. I just basically picked three main questions and some days had more questions than just one, like how are organs made? What systems do we have? But they're kind of related questions. And so I'd put them on the same day and then I'd find the page numbers from both of these spine books. 
And so I did that. I just went through and I made myself a bunch of notes. And then I started to feel like this looked a little bit busy. And so what I did next was I went to my computer and I made myself a spreadsheet. And this really works for me. Some people might not need this much detail, but this really helps me because like I said, here's my questions. Here's the page numbers from the 100 question book and here's the page numbers from the DK book. What this allowed me to do was to put it all out in different charts and then it allowed me to look at some other things. So I have extra books, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute, that I labeled for morning time books. Then I have activities and under activities is also where we're gonna do some lab demonstrations and things like that. So I wanted to be able to have a place where I could type that in or add that in so I didn't forget any of my resources. So basically this is kind of where I ended up. But next I'm gonna go through my resources for you. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do a quick flip through of these fine books because I feel like they're a little bit more of the important stuff in the unit study and everything else is supplemental. If we only get to this stuff, I will be happy. So again, it's a bright colorful book, lots of different pictures. As for the DK book, it looks like a lot of different DK books, which I really like. They're very colorful. They have nice, beautiful spreads. Not too much information because this is part of their first series, so I believe it is written towards those younger ages, and so you can get some good information without getting overwhelmed. I think it will be really, really good, and I think they're going to like it a lot. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you was my stack of books, which I just love stacks of books. It starts with the Magic School Bus. This one's the Inside the Human Body. So it's the, like a lot of different Magic School Bus books. It's got lots of good information and it looks like it covers a lot of different systems. Then this is one of the new s -form books and I, I really like it. It's about just what happens when you eat. So it's more focused on the digestive tract, healthy eating, vitamins, minerals, so it looks really good. So it's gonna be perfect for this. And then this one is another magic school bus from the library. It's about the five senses. And so this will be a really fun one as well. I love magic school bus books. And then I picked up these three books from the library as well. This is called Parts, More Parts, and Even More Parts by Ted Arnold. And I think that he writes the Fly Guy books, or at least the illustrations look really similar. And I've heard these are just funny, especially just good humor for for boys and really young kids in general. And so they're just quick little picture books that I think my kids are gonna find to be pretty funny. Like I said, I'm really just trying to make science fun and not just boring facts and things like that because like, you can ruin science for these younger years and I just really, really don't wanna do that. I also have a cat in the hat book, Inside Your Outsides, all about the human body. And I just love these learning library books and so it's a kind of a, again, a classic cat in the hat. The great thing about these and say like the Magic School Bus books that talk about the whole human body, it just reinforces what we have been learning this whole time. So it kind of brings things back up, which I think is really good. And then here is an, a Lift the Flap See Inside book. So things like, I'm gonna really excited about using this for the heart because it goes through all the valves and where it all goes. So it's a great diagram for that, as well as the lungs. It goes a little bit further in than some of the things we are covering. So. It's a great extra resource. I also picked up this book, which I'm really excited about. Clearly I got it used, but it's an older book. What I really liked about it are these transparent sheets. I think they'll really enjoy kind of playing with where the muscles and bones go, the hearts and lungs, so they can see where everything is all together. So I thought that was really fun. So the next thing I wanna show you is all the different activities I have picked up for this unit, which I'm really excited about. I think the activities can really make the unit study so much more fun. So these are just coloring books and my kids love coloring. My son especially, he's really enjoying like adult coloring books and so I think these will be perfect. He has just an attention for detail. My daughter not so much but I got her her own anyway because it's important that she does have her own and then there's information in them but this isn't our main source of learning. This is something that they can color while we're talking about these different organ systems or nerves or muscles or whatever it is. So we'll pull these out during the different reading times that they can color. The next thing I picked up was a Melissa and Doug magnetic puzzle. And so these are really fun. So they are anatomically correct, which I think is a good thing, but it's good to know. But they're magnetic. And so you can put together the different systems onto the body. So you could be talking about the brain and the organs, or you can just dress her and it's really fun. 
be a girl. I think these are great, especially for the age of my kids. The twins, even my toddlers will really enjoy these. And along that same line, I picked up a double-sided Melissa and Doug floor puzzle. So this has the skeletal system as well as internal organs and circulatory system on the other side. For the last hands-on activity, I picked up this little set of models. Granted, these are for older kids and they are kind of small, but I think they're just really good. There is something about being able to handle things like the liver, the lungs, the rib cage, things like that that can really help kids learn. And they were pretty affordable for the whole pack and I just got all four. I got the one, the body, the skeleton, the heart, and the brain. I'm thinking of printing out some flashcards and maybe they can line up different things like take the liver and move it onto the liver page and things like that. So some very hands-on Montessori sort of activities. And the last thing I wanna highlight are some of these other resources. I have this giant science resource book, Evan Moore, grade one through six, and it's great. My plan is to look through this and see what we wanna use. Some of these might be good for just putting on the wall or things like that. The same idea with this interactive science notebook. So I kind of keep these two on hand to have things to color. But I might not use this as much because I have those coloring books I already showed you. The last thing I have is this Janice Van Cleve Biology for Every Kid. This is where all the science demonstrations came in for the biology for the grammar stage. And I'm excited, I really liked it. And so I haven't quite picked out which ones I'm planning on doing yet, but stuff like this where you blindfold them and you give them pieces of apple or pieces of onion to determine sensitivity to taste, things like that. So it's like, oh, there's just so many good things like the wagon wheel. I, I love stuff like this. Experiments and demonstrations are key to elementary science as well as making it fun. So that is my plan for this stuff. And like I said, I'm still kind of using this as a bit of a guide, but I've definitely branched away from it. I hope you enjoyed seeing my process for how I set up and organized my unit study. I'm like equal parts excited about this as well as nervous because this is literally the first time I have designed my own unit study. And granted, I do have some experience with designing courses, but they were for college, not for kindergarten. I really enjoy kind of mapping stuff out and envisioning what's gonna happen. So I'll keep you posted as to how well this works, but I'm pretty jazzed. And I've always had a tendency just to do it myself anyway, so I'm just trying. I'm trying and I can always go back to a curriculum later if this doesn't work, but I think it will. I think I have a good plan. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope you found some good resources. And please comment below with other resources you think would go really well with this unit study. Please consider liking the video sharing it if you know of anybody who would need some extra resources and consider subscribing if you like what you see. Anyway, that's all I have for today. So thank you and have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next homeschool video. Okay, take care.